Back now at 7.30, and the popular trading app Robinhood is under new scrutiny as part of a lawsuit centered on a tragedy. The site is part of the reason GameStop shares recently surged against expectations before quickly plunging again, costing many small investors large amounts of money. It was a painful reminder for one family of their own son's death by suicide last June at a time when he believed he'd racked up massive losses on the Robinhood app. We spoke to his parents who blamed the company for his death. To be honest, it was really a joyful household. It was. Late last spring, Dan and Dorothy Kearns had a full house after the pandemic brought their 20-year-old son, Alex, home from college. One night, he says to me, he's like, Mom, I don't, know, I don't know what I want to do with my life yet, but I do know I want to help people. But Alex was also interested in investing, and it opened an account with Robinhood, an app that lets anybody buy and sell stocks with no fees, and no experience. I didn't see the harm in doing that, and it was limited exposure, so. Um, Where did he get the money that he had from? That was grabbing grandpa money, gifts. I'll told he might have had maybe five grand in his savings. What the Kearns didn't realize was he had also been approved by Robinhood to buy and sell options, a riskier instrument with the potential for huge losses. I don't understand how they allowed that to happen in the first place. They say Alex's inexperience is what got him into trouble one night last June when his Robinhood account showed a negative balance of more than $700,000. At 3.26 a.m., the company then sent an automated email demanding Alex take immediate action, requesting a payment of more than $170,000 on his debt. He thought he blew up his life. He thought he screwed up beyond repair. Robinhood has no customer service number, but Alex emailed three times to help understand whether he could still offset the losses with another trade. Could someone please look into this, he wrote, receiving back nothing more than an automated message. And their response was a canned reply, basically, we'll get back to you later. What do you do with that thought? It haunts me. It really does. Later that day, the sheriff knocked on the Kern's front door to deliver the news. Alex had killed himself. I lost the love of my life. He, um, I miss him more than anything. Um, it's the kind of pain that I don't think it should be humanly possible. Robin Hood says its mission is to democratize finance, bringing younger and more diverse investors into the market, an approach the company highlighted in a Super Bowl ad. You don't need to become an investor. You were born one. Robin Hood. It's the conduct, and this conduct is reprehensible. William Galvin is the chief financial regulator in the state of Massachusetts and one of Robin Hood's chief critics. It was a de very deliberate effort on the part of Robin Hood to particularly entice younger, inexperienced investors. Yeah, I bet he's investing right now. He points to the company's marketing, claiming it rewards daily usage of the app and encourages frequent trading. A new kind of investor is changing things up. Even working in virtual confetti in what a recent complaint by Galvin's office described as gamification. They call themselves Robin Hood for a reason, right? right? Robin Hood steals from the rich, rich and, and gives, gives to the, to the poor. poor right. Is that what's happening? I, I don't think so. They have not acted in the best interest of their customers. So the idea that they're caring for the poor is simply not true. What happened to Alex Kearns is a particular worry to Galvin and his team. They say they found more than 600 examples in his state alone of Robin Hood customers who, by the company's own standards, should not have been approved for options trading, but were. Their rush to make money out of this has caused them to add people to their base and to recklessly bring people on board who they probably should have said, no, we won't qualify you for options right now. We, too, were curious to know how easy it is to get approved for basic options trading on Robinhood. One of the first questions is, how much investment experience do you have? I'm going to choose none. That resulted in a rejection. But it's giving me the choice here to update my experience if I'd like to. That's but by it. simply changing no experience to not much, we got approved immediately. Welcome to options. How are those guardrails? How does that stop... Um, an 18-year-old from making risky trades that they don't really understand. In a suicide note to his parents, Alex had similar questions. How was a 20-year-old with no income able to get assigned almost a million dollars worth of leverage, he wrote, adding, I also have no clue what I was doing. He said in the note, 
I didn't want to die. He also said that he, he was doing this for us because he was trying to save us from what he thought was impending financial disaster. In a wrongful death lawsuit they plan to file today, Dan and Dorothy Kern say Robin Hood must be held accountable. Do you think if Robin Hood had somebody manning an email account or picking up a phone that Alex would be here today? Absolutely. Yeah, I have no doubt. He just wanted an answer. He just needed a little help. He could have gotten answers to those questions, and there was nobody there to, to do that for him. It wasn't until the day after Alex Kearns killed himself that Robin Hood sent an email suggesting he didn't actually owe any money at all. Robin Hood CEO declined an interview with us, but in a statement to CBS News, the company said it was devastated by Alex Kearns' death. The Robin Hood said it has since revised the experience requirements for customers seeking the type of riskier trades and options that Alex was trading, and also added a feature for customers in his situation to request a callback from the company. However, it still does not have a phone number for customers to call themselves. The company said it disagrees with the allegations made by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, but Robin Hood declined to address why it did not respond to Alex Kearns' emails the night before his death. So let me get this straight. He may not have lost any money at all. It this appeared, may be a mistaken it, email. It appears that he was led to believe he was deeply in debt and had ruined himself and his yeah. parents when, in fact, he wasn't. And so at issue here, and the state of Massachusetts brings this up, is Robin Hood is like your broker, and yeah. your broker cannot lead you to believe you have ruined yourself if you have not. That's, that's a big part of the issue here. It is a heartbreaking story, but I'm trying to figure out what is Robin Hood's responsibility. If you go on the app and you sign, willingly sign, and you're over the age of 18, which makes you an adult in many places, what is your responsibility? A duty of care to a customer who is like a, a person who you're giving financial advice to, in essence, a broker-dealer yeah. relationship. It's different in each state. But, you know, something the parents bring up, which I think is key, is Alex was too young to go to Las Vegas and gamble. Yeah, yes. yeah. But he could go on Robin Hood in his bedroom upstairs and gamble just the same. Yeah, a lot of questions. Know. Heartbreaking I wanna, story. I want to understand. I mean, basically, if, if this is true, then an erroneous email caused this young man's suicide. Yeah. Yes. Which is just, I mean... And so a key question is, why Devastate. don't they have customer service available at a phone number's reach? And we're actually going to talk about that. Tomorrow, we investigate why Robinhood has no phone number for customers to call. And we speak with former employees who have described some of the problems that they faced when Robinhood users needed help. Hmm.